Perhaps by now you've heard tell of the Brandt Foundation's acclaimed Jean-Michel Basquiat retrospective, which inaugurated the institution's new East Village space back in March 2019. So we thought we'd take a concurrent look at the life and work of the so-called Radiant Child, who ascended to art stardom in his early 20s and transformed New York City culture from the inside out with one of the brightest and briefest careers in modern art history. This is Several Circles. Before Jean-Michel Basquiat was canonized as a cultural messiah, he conjured initial intrigue in the late 70s as one half of Samo, an abbreviation of same old shit. Samo was a fleeting but notable street art collaboration between the artist and his friend Al Diaz. Together they left cryptic messages across New York City, riveting local journalists and passers-by alike. A falling out between the two concluded the venture circa 1979, but Samo would poise Basquiat for his own independent practice, which straddled street and fine art. Basquiat would continue to create, sketching compelling symbols and illustrating seemingly random thoughts on postcards, which he peddled on the city streets. In 1980, Basquiat noticed Andy Warhol dining in a Soho restaurant and decided to try his luck. He was essentially down and out at the time, after being expelled from high school for allegedly throwing a pie in the principal's face. So with nothing to lose, the young artist walked right up to Warhol, who was in the middle of a lunch with his art dealer, no less, and asked him to buy a postcard of his work. Warhol's dealer initially dismissed Basquiat for being too young, but the up-and-coming artist possessed a rare energy that made a lasting impression on Warhol, and ironically, it was the same dealer who would facilitate Basquiat's ascent to stardom in short order. Basquiat's breakout showcase took form in the legendary Midtown exhibition entitled The Times Square Art Show. Housed within a derelict building on the corner of 41st Street and 7th Avenue, Basquiat's work was featured alongside that of Keith Haring, Jenny Holzer, Kenny Scharf, and Nan Golden, all of whom became art stars in their own right. Likewise, this keystone showcase would ignite Basquiat's dazzling career. His success was subsequently cemented with his coveted inclusion in a group show at MoMA PS1 in Queens, where his work was featured alongside Warhol's in 1980. From then on, he would be known as the Radiant Child, a title so famously coined by René Ricard in an art form essay. Critics were captivated by Basquiat's paintings, impassioned and dissident, inhabited by buzzwords, crossed out thoughts, and a compelling symbolic lexicon, from the crown to the boxer and the skull. He never explained what he endeavored to communicate through his continuous use of these icons, and to this day they remain up for interpretation. But from Basquiat's many references to black culture, we do know that he sought to elevate the black figures whom he venerated from boxer Muhammad Ali to jazz musician Max Roach. Strength, regality, and leadership serve as obvious potential interpretations. So Basquiat's practice was mysterious and intriguing and it upset the fine art status quo. It provided insight into the world of a wildly creative mastermind whose Haitian and Puerto Rican ancestry informed an imperative, non-white, non-European perspective, which had been grossly overlooked until then. And when all of this was finally introduced into the mainstream, Basquiat radicalized contemporary culture. Now, now, a key to contextualizing Basquiat's art historical relevance is to consider not only the source, because Basquiat was, after all, young and stylish with an impossible appeal, but to also consider where he fell on the art history continuum. For decades, the art world had been unknowingly primed for his arrival. The abstract expressionists of the 50s, like Jackson Pollock, Willem de Kooning, Helen Frankenthaler, and Joan Mitchell, cultivated an unfettered visual language that communicated their wildest, most spontaneous emotions through polychromatic splatters and cacophonous sweeps of color. Then in the 60s, pop artists like Andy Warhol, Roy Lichtenstein, and Robert Rauschenberg transformed banal household objects and products into weighty symbols of economic, political, and cultural commentary. The minimalists and the conceptualists of the 1970s distilled lofty subjects like ecstasy and anxiety into geometric forms and moody colors. So by the time Basquiat came along in the 1980s, art was free to be impulsive, to be pointedly opinionated, to be angry, passionate, and rebellious. In 1983, Basquiat was the youngest artist to exhibit at the Whitney Biennial, a prestigious showcase of contemporary American art held every two years at the Whitney Museum of American Art in New York City. In 1985, he landed the cover of the New York Times, but he said that 1982 was his most creative year. This was the golden year after he had been discovered, but before the pressures of institutionalized art production crushed him under the weight of expectation. This was the year when he painted brilliant compositions, including obnoxious liberals, and most famous famously untitled, which sold at Sotheby's New York for an astounding $110.5 million, the highest sum ever paid for an American artwork at auction. Poetically, Untitled dethroned Warhol
Warhol's silver car crash double disaster, which sold for a previously record-breaking $105 million at Sotheby's New York in 2013. Basquiat died of an overdose at the age of 27. He was likely aware that his story was to live fast and die young, and so he titled one of, if not his last painting in 1988, Riding with Death. On view until May 15, 2019, Jean-Michel Basquiat is the first exhibition to be held at the Brandt Foundation's new East Village space. It's a landmark showcase at that, comprised of paintings that the artist created while he lived and worked nearby, and that have been lent from collections all over the world. And if that's not enough Basquiat for you, Jack Shane Gallery's Upstate Outpost in Kinderhook, New York, is slated to unveil an exhibition of artworks by Basquiat and Warhol, more specifically, pieces that both artists, who died less than a year apart, created in their final years in addition to a collaborative series that they worked on together between 1984 and 1985. All of this will be on view at Jack Shaman's The School from June 1st through September 7th, 2019. Basquiat's practice was shorter than that of any other major artist, but the staggering impact of his existence defined New York City in the 1980s and echoes throughout contemporary culture to this day. Thanks for watching Several Circles. Don't forget to subscribe below for more content about historic, modern, and contemporary artists with current and upcoming exhibitions in New York City.